Hi, everyone. We're just waiting for our presenter, Ariella, to get on, and we will be starting shortly. Thank you all for logging in so uh, promptly. Hi, everybody. Again, thank you for joining us. We're just waiting for our presenter, Ariella Schwartz, to join us. She should be joining us momentarily, and then we will begin. My screen is black. I can't see you. Um, I don't know why that is. I can see you. Uh, but there's nothing to see except the pictures yet. Oh, start video. Get me. All right, everybody, sorry about that. There was a little miscommunication and um, you're all gonna have to deal with me as your presenter today. Uh, hopefully that's not gonna be a problem for anybody. Give me a moment, I'm just gonna get our presentation up. I really apologize for this uh, slight my mix up with who was presenting. So give me a moment. Hopefully we'll get the right page up. Okay. All right, everybody. Sorry for the inauspicious beginning, but hopefully we'll make up for it as we go along. And uh, let's get started. My name is Shlomo Sokal. I am a post Aliyah and government liaison for Nefesh Benefesh. Um, and what we're going to do today is we're going to go through all your next steps, what you still have to do when you make Aliyah. 
I am hoping that all of you will have received or will soon receive your post Aliyah guide. Either someone will have dropped it off or you will have gotten at the airport. Um, if you don't have one, I'm going to ask my colleague Yitz Wiener, who's joining me today, to just put a link in the chat box. Um, I'm going to ask you for your uh, patience as <laughs> I get I go on with this, but uh, you'll be able to see in the chat box um, the post Aliyah guide link very shortly. I would also ask you to put your questions in the post Aliyah. I'm sorry, in the chat box, and I will be happy to answer them as we go along. Um, what we're going to be doing here today is we are going to be going through all the next steps, make sure you know what you need to do, and um, know, make sure that you know who to reach out to in case you need anything. Um, as you can see in the chat box, there is the email and phone number for our post Aliyah division, answers at nbn.org.il or star 3680. That number is answered from 9 to 3, Sunday through Thursday. Uh, unless it's a hug or something else. Um, but that's where you can reach us to ask your questions. Okay, so now that we've gone, now that I've mentioned that, let's go on and let's discuss the post Aliyah guide. What you see here in front of you is the post Aliyah guide on our website. And we're going to go through the next steps. We're going to talk about all the things that need to be talked about. So um, I'm assuming all of you made Aliyah from outside of Israel and did it at Ben Gurion Airport. So the first thing we're going to talk about are the things that you should have received in the airport. Um, if you are an Ole Chadash, you will have received what's called a Tudat Ole. Uh, I'm going to make a distinction as I talk about the different statuses of the Olim. There are, of course, Olim Chadashim, but there are also people who are Katin Choser or Ezrach Ole or former A1. We're going to try to steer everything towards what I would call the plain vanilla but I will point out when there are differences between that and other statuses in case they happen to you. Um, just so I can get a quick know, knowing where I'm talking, who I'm talking to, if people can send me in the chat, if they had a status other than Ole Chadash, that means Mishpachat Olim, A1, Katin Choser, Ezra Chole, that way I'll have a better idea of who I'm talking to and whether I need to really go off on tangents. Um, so if you can just please send me that in the in the uh, link. Okay, if the PDF link does not work, we will have a copy of everyone who registered and I will make sure to get you all a copy of a link that works. Um, Yitz, if you can please try to find a better link for me. Okay, so I see we have an, at least one as Rachitola, at least one Katina Choseret, so I am going to be mentioning those things as they come along. So we're starting with the Tudat Ole. The Tudat Ole is the booklet that you got at the airport showing you that you are an Ole and that you have benefits. Um, if you are an Ezra Ole or if you got something different, you will have gotten something called the Tudat Zaka'ut. Um, usually only Ezra Chim Olim get that at the airport. A Katin Choser usually does not get that. Uh, a former A1 will not get that either. They usually do that at the local branch of Mishra Lakutal. We'll get to that in a little bit. But if you were an Ole Chadash, you should have gotten a Tudat Ole. If you were an Ezra Chole, you should have gotten a Tudat Zakaut. Um, the next thing you would have done is you would have gotten your healthcare registration form. And again, this is only for Olim Chadashim. Um, possibly if you're an Ezra Chole, you would have gotten that as well. What that means is that for anyone who does not have that status or didn't, who did not get that piece of paper from Ms. Shadak at the airport, that you are not yet signed up for Kupat Cholim. In a little bit, we're going to talk about Kupat Cholim, and I will tell you how to sign up, how you're going to do that. But for the moment, um, just Olim Chadashim and possibly Ezrachim Olim should have gotten that at the airport. Um, you should have gotten the first cash payment of Sal Klita. For those of you who are eligible, again, this is going to be the same thing. If you did not get a Tudat Ole or Tudat Zagot at the airport, you will not have gotten your first payment of Sal Klita. Note of future bank account. This is a form you would have gotten at Mr. Klita at the airport that you would then bring to the bank um, for them to stamp for later use at Mr. Klita. Um, unless you are a Katin Choser, you will have gotten a SIM card at the airport with 5,000 minutes, six gig internet package, that's good for three months. Um, there's a number here that you can call if you want to either continue the service 
or even transfer the number to a different carrier. I'm gonna apologize from the beginning. I know I'm talking very quickly. There's a lot of information to go over. Um, we have a limited amount of time, but I, so I'm gonna be talking rather quickly. Uh, if there's anything that you want me to repeat, please stop me and tell me to repeat it. If you have questions, please send them in the chat box right away. And that way, while I'm talking about the subject, if there's something that you're not understanding, stop me and I will, of course, ask the question. We're gonna to get to banks in a moment. So we're not at banks just yet. Jump the gun a little bit, but we'll get there. Okay, um, so then there's the important notes, which are the things that I've already mentioned. If you had a different status of the Nalech Hadash, some things will not happen at the airport. Uh, Katinim Chosrim do not get a SIM card at all. It's not one of the benefits they're eligible for. Um, but everyone else should have gotten a SIM card. Uh, if you're a Mishpachat Olim, and I didn't see anyone put in that they were a Mishpachat Olim, but if you, if there are, then this, the 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 uh, Toshav Chozer spouse or the new Oles spouse, depending on what the family's uh, dynamic was, will get added to the Tudat Ole later on at Mistrada Klita. So let's continue along. And we're gonna go through step-by-step step of exactly what you need to do. So we're gonna start with the biometric dots of hood. Um, I'm assuming that some of you must have gotten your, okay, some of you must have gotten your two dots of hood at the airport. I'm assuming that most of you did not get a temporary two dots of hood at the airport. If you did not, you need to make an appointment with Misrata Pnim in order to apply for the biometric two dots of hood. At that, you're gonna make the appointment at myvisit.com. You're probably gonna go on there. And if you haven't done that yet, you will probably go on there and you'll see that the next appointment is in February. And at that point, you're gonna panic and then you're gonna call us. And we are gonna try to help you set up an earlier appointment. If possible, I would encourage you to keep on trying every morning around 7.30, 8 o'clock Many offices at Misrata Pnim will open up new appointments for the day. So keep on trying. That's also what we do. But if you're having trouble making an appointment, please call us. This is something you need to do right away. If you did not get a temporary two dots out of the airport, you need to take care of this right away because you will not be able to continue any of the other steps until you complete this step. Um, if you got a temporary two dots out of the airport, wonderful. It's good for nine months. It is completely valid for all purposes until it expires or until you get and activate your biometric two dots of hood. Um, that lets me dovetail right into the idea that when you get the two dots of hood, you are going to need to activate it. Usually activation of the two dots of hood is very easy. Um, within about 24 to 48 hours of receiving the two dots of hood, of actually picking it up, you will get a text from Mishada Pnim or more likely they'll say PIBA, which is what they're actually called. Um, and that will that text will ask you to reply with a one if you got it and a zero if you didn't get it. If you reply with a one, that will activate your two dots of hood. If you don't get that text or if you don't receive text or if you get the text and because in Hebrew you choose to ignore the text, you can always go into any Misrata Pnim office without an appointment during regular business hours, and you'll be able to receive your, um, and you'll be able to activate your two dots of hood. That's the biometric one. Once you activate your biometric two dots of hood, your temporary two dots of hood is no longer valid, and you must then use the biometric two dots of hood. Someone just asked me a very interesting question in the chat box. What is the difference between a tudat ole and a tudat zahud? I wanna, um, it'll come to, I'm sorry. So I'm gonna, someone just asked something about what I just said. I'm gonna answer that one first. To which phone does the text come? When you go to apply for the biometric tudat zahud at Nisrat Apnim, they're going to ask you for a phone number. And that phone number is the phone number that the text will come to. All right. So. Um, how do you know whether you got a temporary two dots of hood? Well, look in what you got. Did you get a laminated card that says on it two dots of hood? If you got it, great. If you didn't get it, then you know that you didn't get it. Two dots of hood is your ID card. That's every Israeli has an ID card. Two dots of is your document stating that you are an OLE and therefore have benefits. 
All right. So obviously not every Israeli has that, only Olim have that. So you want to see which one you're getting. All right. If you are getting, okay, if you came, then we're going to get an even more complicated. Some of you came on a group flight. If you came on a group flight, we are going to be getting the temporary two dots of hood for you. And we will have arranged with you when you're going to be getting the temporary two dots of hood. So we'll have arranged a pickup time. I believe you're getting it on Tuesday if you came in on one of the group flights. Um, will they accept a US telephone number? No, they will not. It must be an Israeli telephone number. Um, okay, uh, at the two dots of hood pickup, you're only getting the temporary one, not the biometric one. You will still need to make an appointment to get the biometric one, but it's not so urgent because you will have the temporary one and that's good for um, nine months. All right, so that is the dots of hood. Let's talk about step two, which is a bank account. Now, the reason bank account is step two is obviously you need a two dots of hood in order to open a bank account, except of course you don't. Um, technically, the law is that you can open a bank account with just the two dot o left, and you can certainly try that. But a lot of banks have their systems set up that they require an issue date of a two dots of hood in order to open an account. So even though technically they're supposed to open it with just the two dot o left, oftentimes their structural um, way they're set up will not allow them to. So just be aware if you're going to the bank without your two dots of hood yet. You may be able to open the account, but there's a good chance that you will not. When you go to open your bank account, you're going to need to bring with you your Tudat hood, your Tudat Le, if you have it, okay, your um, US passport or Canadian or wherever you're from. And you're also going to need some amount, the, the I'm sorry, the form you got from the, from Nishada Klita, the airport, the form for opening a bank account that I had mentioned before. And um, you're also going to need to provide your U.S. Social Security number if you are a U.S. citizen. Some banks may ask you for the card, um, but they're really only supposed to ask you for the number. So just uh, if they do ask you for the card, ask to speak to the manager. Usually you're able to get out of that because, again, they're only supposed to ask you for the number. Um, at the bank, it tells you here exactly what you're going to do at the bank. You're going to give them all of your information. They're going to stamp your card. You're going to deposit some amount of money if you can, um, 20, 50 shekel, whatever it is, because you want to get a deposit receipt. Because at Ms. Shada Klita, they're going to be asking you for a deposit receipt. If you're opening a bank account at a bank that does not allow you to deposit, sometimes you'll have a cashless bank and they won't allow you to deposit money right away ask them for an opening statement because you can use that and Nishada Klita as well. Because U.S. citizens have to fill out U.S. tax forms, um, they, not every bank is willing to open a bank account for U.S. OLIN, so you may have to shop around for a bank. Um, it's not like Lumi is better than Poalim, is better than Mizrahi. It's just that certain branches will not do this. Um, we've talked to a couple of banks about how to find branches. Um, Mizrahi Tzvachot has someone you can contact. So if anyone's having trouble finding a bank, we do have a good contact at Mizrahi Tzvachot who can help you find a bank that will open for US citizens and he can even help you make an appointment. But that's only if you're really having trouble finding a bank that will allow you to open the account. A um, couple of important notes about the bank account. If you are married, you must have a joint bank account or you will not be able to get any benefits. If, you're, uh, if your spouse has not yet made Aliyah and is not an Israeli citizen, then there's no need for a joint bank account. Um, if you do have a joint bank account, again, like I said, you must if both are Israeli, it's a good idea to sign something called a Tofes Aruchat Yamim. This is the form that you can get at the bank. Um, and what this allows is that if God forbid something happens to one spouse, the other spouse will still have consistent and uninterrupted access to the bank, okay, to the bank account. Whereas if you didn't have this form and something happened to one spouse, God forbid, the other spouse would have some time while everything's being adjudicated, uh, while you're getting the death certificate or whatever, where you won't have access to the account. So the Tovah Sarochat Yamim is a good idea if you are married. 
Um, I'm joining my spouse who is already here with a bank account. Do I just get added to his account? Yes, but you need to make sure that before doing that, that you've gone to Mishara Pnim, that you are listed as married to each other on your sefach, okay? So you have to be listed as married in Israel with Mishara Pnim in order to do that. Okay, um, let's move on. Uh, I see there's a lot, been a lot of questions. Uh, Yitz is answering most of them um, through the chat box. So please check the chat if you've asked a question. Um, usually Yitz is gonna answer them. I'm just gonna keep a lookout on it to see if there's anything that I wanna answer for the entire group, okay? All right, next step is Misrad HaKrita. Misrad HaKrita is the Ministry of Immigration Absorption. This is where your benefits come from. They don't just fall out of the sky. You actually have to go and apply for them, which means that you have to call and set up an appointment with your local branch of Misrada Klita. You cannot just go to any office of Misrada Klita. You must go to the one that is local to the address on your Tudat Zahud. Um, I believe if you look at page 11 or 12 of the Post Aliyah Guide, you'll see a directory of all the different branches and you'll find the one local to you, you call them and make an appointment. For those of you who live in Yushalayim or Tel Aviv or maybe even some other places, you may call a few times and not get through to anyone or they'll tell you they'll call you back and they don't call you back. If that happens, please call us. This is one of those situations where we have uh, some influence but not control. So if you're having a problem getting an appointment with Ms. Shadaklita, call us. We will let Ms. Shadaklita know that you're trying to reach them but you have to try at least a couple of times to call them. Otherwise, they'll just tell us we have no calls from this person, they never try. So that's Misrata Klita. For those of you who are Katinim uh, Chozrim or former A1 or an Ezra Cholet who didn't register for health insurance at the airport, you're gonna do that here. They're gonna fill out some forms for you for Bituach Lumi and they're gonna send them to Bituach Lumi. If you are a Katin Jose or a former A1 who does not yet have your Tudat Zahut of any kind, still make the appointment with Misada Klita because signing up for health insurance is the most important thing that you're going to do um, with them. Aside from getting all the other benefits sorry, that everyone's gonna do, but you need to do that as quickly as possible because you don't wanna be stuck without health insurance for any length of time. Officially, so someone just said, if you go in person, it's much easier to make an appointment with the receptionist. Officially, the answer that you get from Mr. Klita is that if you go in there without an appointment, they will not even talk to you. Obviously, if you get a nice receptionist who's willing to help you, wonderful. But just be aware that for most of you, if you try to do that, it's not going to work. But if you're really having trouble, it is certainly something that is advisable to try. Max, you have a question. I see your hands up. You want to unmute yourself and ask your question? Yes, thanks. Yeah, go um, ahead. Shalom, everybody. I was my wife was able to make an appointment with Misrata Klita. Okay. Um, and she tried to make one for my for me, uh, and we're not sure if it went through. Can I just show up with her for hers and get my service as well? Do I need my own? If she had, no, it should be one appointment per family for Ms. Rada Klita. Oh, the family, good. Ms. Rada Pnim, each person needs their own appointment, but for Ms. Rada Klita, it's one per family. So it shouldn't be a problem, okay? Wonderful, thank you. You're welcome, okay. All right, so that's Ms. Rada Klita. Again, there's other things that we could talk about regarding status, for example, Ms. Pachato Lim, um, they need a, you're not, you need to get added to it, to that, to that. There's a lot of different things that could happen. I don't want to talk about all the various different statuses and all the various different permutations of what can possibly go on there. But in general, it's your benefits. You're getting your document, whether it's a to that, to that or a to that, to that, to that, that shows that you have benefits. To that, to that, to that is what you get if you were Israeli before making Aliyah. Katin Jose or an Ezra Chole. Okay. Um, okay, great. That is Ms. Shad Aklita. Uh, if anyone's again having problems or questions, you can call us at star 3680 and we will be happy to help you deal with them on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, okay, next. Right. 
value of going to Mesodically Tau without a two dots. Okay. Uh, in general, there's no value or a limited value. I would say if you're a Katin Choser or former A1 who already has a Mispar Zavut and who needs to go to Mishad Aklita to get health insurance, there is value in going without the Tudat Zavut. If you are just an Oleh Chadash who doesn't have the Tudat Zavut yet, there is limited value. I would not recommend going unless you already have the appointment, in which case go. It sometimes can be harder to make the appointment. So if you have the appointment, go and they'll talk to you about what to do when you get all the other things that you need. Very often what we have is particularly with people who make Aliyah from within Israel, is they're not able to open a bank account before going to Mishra Klita. I won't go into the reasons, but it just happens. And they go without the bank account and then they tell them that, okay, when you have the bank account, just here's how to give us the information. If you're able to get an appointment and you don't yet have all the documents, please, um, please go anyway if you have the appointment. Um, Shlomo, can I add something? Yes, please. There, there, very often, if you don't have that to that zuhut, um, but you do somehow have a bank account already because you're able to open it with your to that tole then very often they will accept that bank piece um, or the proof of the account and at least initiate the South Lita, the absorption basket money, um, even without the Tudat Zuhut, if it works out like that. It doesn't often happen, but if it does, then it is worth going for that. Thank you, yes. All right, so I just asked, uh, all the sites are listed in Hebrew in myvisit.com, which they are. Hebrew is the national language of Israel. Um, do I need to figure out which one is Misrata Pnim to proceed with the appointment making? Misrata Pnim on my visit is called, why can't I think of it? Yes, what's it called? Population Immigration Authority. But in Hebrew, it is Rishuta Uchusin Vahagira. Rishuta Uchusin Vahagira. That's what it's called in uh, on my visit, Population and Immigration Authority. Um, and that's the one you're going to be looking for. So someone just asked health insurance without two dots of hood, question mark, which is a great segue because we're about to start talking about Kupat Cholim and Bituach Lumi. All right. So, like I said, um, for most of you, you're Olim Chadashim. You will have gotten the sheet of paper telling you that you are registered for Kupat Cholim um, and which Kupat Cholim you are registered for. That means that you are registered for Kupat Cholim, you are registered for health insurance. What you need to do is you need to wait about five business days from your date of Aliyah, and then go to your local branch of Kupat Cholim, Maccabi, Mulchede, Khalif, Lumi, whatever you chose, whatever's on that piece of paper, tell them you made Aliyah, and get your card. They will give you the card. At that point, you can also sign up for supplemental health insurance, you don't have to, it costs extra money, but if you do it within 90 days of your Aliyah, there's no waiting period for the additional benefits. In order to do that, you are going to need to have your Tudat Ole. So if you don't have your Tudat Ole, you can still get your card from the Kupat Cholim, but you probably will not be able to sign up for the supplemental insurance. Um, for those of you who did not sign up for health insurance at the airport, Again, that would be Katinim Chozim, former A1. Like I said, you're going to do that at Misada Klita because there are forms that Misada Klita has to send to Bituach Lumi in order for, to confirm to Bituach Lumi that you should not be considered a Toshav Chozer, a returning resident who has a waiting period of six months for health insurance. So that's, that's where, why Misada Klita is involved with you getting health insurance. So again, if you are in one of those statuses where you did not yet get health insurance at the airport, you need to get that Mishra Klita appointment as soon as possible. If you can't, please give us a call so we can help you figure out what to do. There are other workarounds, but Mishra is the is the is the standard. Okay. Uh, all right. Now, if you, currently you have a two, even if you don't have a two dots of hood yet. You have a Tudat Zahut number. It's in your Tudat Ola. 
all right? You have that form showing that you signed up for Kupat Cholim and that you are registered in a Kupat Cholim, even though the registration hasn't officially gone through yet because computers take some time to sync up. But God forbid, between the time that you get your card and you and now, if you need to get, get medical care, you can go to the emergency room with that piece of paper you got at the airport. Now, if you are a Katin Jose or a former A1 and you didn't get a piece of paper and you're not yet registered, there is a chance that you will have to, that you'll, you'll probably have to pay out of pocket, but then you can apply for reimbursement once everything is completed. Okay, if you are a Toshav Jose and you didn't pay or, or, or to, to waive the waiting period, then you will not be able to get reimbursed. You need to get private health care. But that's for a different story. That's for Toshav Imchlosrim specifically. Uh, and now we've gotten to the point where I'm sure I've confused everybody. So I'm going to stop before I get anyone even more confused. Um, is there dental coverage from the Kupa? Most of them, um, you can buy additional dental coverage. It's not part of the basic package, but it's something that you can buy supplemental um, through most of the uh, of the coupon. Um, okay, we'll get to that in a minute. All right, great. All right, next, monthly child care benefit. There are two child care benefits that you get from the state for children under 18. The first is called Kitzbat Yiladim. Kitzbat Yiladim is money that you get every month from Bituach Lumi paid into your bank account. It's about a, between 140 and 170 shekel per child, depending on how many children you have. Um, you're only gonna start seeing this after you give your bank account information to Ms. Rada Klita. Until you do that, they have no idea of your bank account information. So you need to first, until you go to Ms. Rada Klita, that you're not gonna see this in your bank account. The important thing is that you wanna make sure that you see it getting started within three months of your Aliyah. The reason for this is that they will only pay retroactive for three months. So if more than three months goes by since your Aliyah, you may lose out on some money if you don't make sure that you're getting this. The next benefit is a savings account that Bituas Lumi opens up for each child. They will put 51 shekel a month into this bank account. You can arrange that you will match it from your kitzbat tiladim, from the money that Bituach Lumi gives you for each child. You can arrange that, that 51 shekel will match what they put in for each child. Um, you have to choose what kind of bank account you want. There are four options. Three of them are mutual funds. One is just a savings account in your bank. You will do this on the Bituach Lumi website. You must choose the bank account within six months of your Aliyah. Otherwise, they will assign one to you at random. What's so bad about that? In reality, nothing. But um, the mutual fund accounts, we have not been able to get a direct answer or a straight answer as to whether or not they are required to be double taxed by the US government. So because we haven't been able to get a, de a definitive answer on that, most US OLIM will use the savings account rather than the mutual fund. But you do your own research, figure out if even with double taxation, it still may be worth it. You have to do your own research on to that. Um, but that's out care. Okay, next. Um, school registration. I am hoping that all of you who have children under 18 will have at the very least have chosen or started looking into what school you want your kids to go to. If you have, great. If you haven't, please call us right away. Um, but you need, you're going to need to finalize the school registration, which means calling your municipal Aliyah coordinator or someone from the municipality who's in charge of education and making sure that they have the Tudosa Hood number for the children and that the children's registration has been finalized. Okay. All right. Next. Okay. One second. All right, Arnona. Arnona is our municipal property taxes. Arnona is the municipal property taxes, unlike the United States, are paid by the person living in the property, not necessarily the owner of the property. Um, 
which means that you all have to, unless you're like a living by someone else or you're a student in a dorm, you all have to pay our nona. Um, you're eligible unless you're a katin choser. Katinim chosrim do not get this benefit. It's one of the only differences. Um, but unless you're a katin choser, you get a benefit for a 12 month period out of the first 24 months where you can get a discount of up to 90% of the Arnona. All right, so I know that that's a confusing way to say it, but I want it to be as precise as possible. Basically, um, you get an Arnona benefit, you get it up to a 90% discount for one 12 month period. You have to apply for that 12 month discount within the first year because you have to claim all 12 months of benefit within the first 24 months. Um, in order to do this, you need to go to the municipality. You're going to present your Tudat Ole, your Tudat Zako, uh, Tudat Zahut, and your lease agreement, and your Anona bill if you already have it. Um, you must have, if you don't own, you must have a lease agreement that runs the full duration of the benefit, which means you cannot get the benefit on a six-month lease. You must have at least a 12-month lease in order to get this benefit. Um, there are other discounts that, that are available for Arnona, but there's no double dipping. So for example, there's a benefit for seniors, okay? So you, but you can't get the senior discount and the OLED discount at the same time. And I believe in almost all cases, the OLED discount is going to be greater, okay? Um, if you are living with family instead of buying or renting on our own, then there's no one owner to work. Right. If your name is not on a lease agreement or a purchase agreement, then you're not officially living in that property. So you're not, you don't have to worry about our Nona. Okay. All right. I have a question yes. regarding, regarding if you had a 12 month lease, but you just became Oleen, you know, a couple of days ago. So then uh, effectively you only owe him for like six months or so, and it's not a full year. So what do you have to do? Rent another one or? So you can try going to the municipality and seeing if they can make an arrangement for you. Sometimes they'll make an arrangement and say, okay, come back in January or come back when you have the new lease. But officially the letter of the law is that they're not supposed to give you the discount without a 12 month without a 12 month lease. Um, but that's why you have two years to use the benefit. Because if right now your apartment is maybe not be where you're gonna stay, or you don't have to use it right now. You can wait until you have a 12 month lease to use it. As long as you apply for the benefit within the first 12 months, you will get the full 12 months of benefit. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. All right, okay. Next, driver's license. I know this is what a lot of you were waiting for. Um, driver's license conversion. You have five years from your date of Aliyah to do your driver's license conversion. However, you only have one year from your date of entry in order to drive on your foreign license. And that one year only resets if you've been out of the country for a full 12 months. So if you were in Israel for any sizable duration of time, more than a couple of weeks, in all likelihood, your year to drive on your foreign license started previously. And you need to do the driver's license conversion as quickly as possible. Um, you'll see that there are links here to the full step-by-step -step instructions on exactly how to do it. If you can prove you've had a license for at least five years before Aliyah, then you can convert without a lesson or a test. If you have it less than two years, you will need to take a lesson and a test and a written test. Um, I see that uh, Yitzhaz or someone has put up in the chat box the instructions on how to study for the theory test. So there's information there if you, uh, if you need it. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, okay. All right, next. That's your driver's license version. I would say that probably 40% of the calls that I take in any given week do not feel like uh, if you don't understand the steps that you're completely on your own, I'm telling you to just, well, figure it out. I'm not. As you're doing it, if anything comes up, if you have any questions, problems, issues, concerns, 
please call us and we can help you figure out what to do. All right. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about Israeli passport. Now, you're only eligible for a passport 90 days or about three months after your Aliyah, whichever one comes last. It has to be 90 days and three full months um, before you can apply for your passport. You can apply for your passport by making an appointment on the myvisit.com website. Again, it's with Nisrat Apnim, and you'll be able to apply for the passport. Now, some of you are no doubt thinking about well, I have to go to Misrata Panim to apply for my Tudat Zahut. Can I just apply for my passport while I'm there? Technically, the answer is maybe. Um, when you go there, ask them if you can apply for the passport. Um, there's a form called Arli. Uh, technically, you all have the right to renounce your Aliyah within three months and live here as what's called a permanent resident. However, permanent residents don't get a passport. And once you get the passport, you no longer can renounce your uh, citizenship and live here as a permanent resident. So they don't like to give, they don't like people to cut off their options. And there's also some dispute about whether or not U.S. citizens are even allowed to um, to waive the, to get their passport early. Um, funnily enough, the U.S. consulate says you are. The U.S., the Israeli Mishan Apnim says the U.S. consulate won't let them. go take that for what it's worth. But you can try. Some Mishan Apnim branches are more willing than others. But you have to go to Mishan Apnim. You may make an appointment on my visit. Every family member needs their own appointment to apply for a passport from the youngest to the oldest. And everyone has to show up in person. All right. Uh, how long will it take to get the passport? Again, once you go there, in about three months, it'll take you usually about two to three weeks to receive the passport once you've gone there and applied. For it. Uh, keep in mind that right now, every Israeli citizen is allowed to leave and enter Israel on their foreign passports until January 1st. After January 1st, you will be required to have a passport um, for Olim, who made Aliyah after, um, well, well, no, but still in there. Okay, so you're, January 1st is still more than three months away. So January 1st is the cutoff date by which you must have your Israeli passport in order to leave or enter Israel. Okay? All right. Um, let's see. Next. Next. All right, I have a different page in front of me, but in your, in your Aliyah guide, you will have a page that says, where to turn in emergency situations. It'll be, it's like orange and it'll have perforations on it or perforation marks. And it'll tell you what to do in case of an emergency. I would encourage you all to rip that page out of your post aliyah guide, put it up on your fridge, but make sure you look at it at some point beforehand. You don't want the first time you're looking at it to be in the middle of an emergency. That would be what we call in the profession bad. Um, a lot of you are moving to communities that have municipal Aliyah coordinators. Make sure you know who that person is. And if you want to, uh, if, if, and reach out to them because they're gonna be your point contact for anything local. What are local things? Things like our Nona school, things like that. Um, that's gonna be your municipal coordinator. Okay, um, let's see. There's a link here to your rights and benefits. I'm not gonna read that to you. That's something you can read on your own. I don't wanna waste your time or my time on something that you can just read. The important thing is, is that when you go to Ms. Radaklita, they're going to explain to you what benefits you have. If for some reason you are not getting the benefits that you think you're getting, that you think you're supposed to be getting, please call us right away. Don't let that go. If you think that, you're, that there's a benefit you're supposed to be getting and they're telling you that you're not, please let us know as soon as possible. Um, like someone just asked me about the benefit for school. Um, again, I'm not gonna go into the benefits, but that there's a lot of information about that. And if you like, you can call us privately and we'll be happy to discuss it with you. Um, we do have a higher education specialist. Um, I believe in the, in the last page of your post Aliyah guide, there's gonna be information about uh, about different departments in Nefesh Benefesh and how to reach them. There'll be a number for primary education, higher education, employment, communities, 
There'll be all sorts of information for our loan soldier program. So all that information is on the last page of your post Aliyah guide. Um, I wanna mention something about traveling. Uh, if you leave Israel at any point, your Salklita will stop. And then when you're back in the country, two weeks after you're back in the country, they will note that you're back and then they will put you in the process for getting the payments again. There should be nothing that you have to do either to stop them or to start them. Um, there are other benefits that will stop if you leave the country, such as the rental subsidy, which is something I didn't talk about. It's not important right now. It doesn't start till eight months after your Aliyah. But that's another thing that will stop if you leave the country, but that you do have to do something to get it restarted. Again, these are all things that I would like you to take the time and read the rights and benefits page. It's literally one page, and that'll help you get an idea of what you're supposed to be getting. And again, if there's anything you don't understand, that's what the um, star 3680 number is there for. So you can call us and we can discuss it with you and, uh, and, make, it, uh, and make it more understandable for you. Um, there's some information in there about setting up your home in Israel, or there's a link to it. We have links to that. Something abroad is new, all that. Um, if you're in the army, once you're drafted, you cannot leave Israel without permission from the government. Uh, just looking at the pictures of the people who I see, I don't think that's an issue for most people here today, but if it does become an issue, again, give us a call. Um, I'm going to leave you with two things. First of all, I gave you our phone number, star 3680, and our email answers at nbn.org.il. Please use them. All right. We are here for you. We are, um, this is what we do. We are all professionals, paid professionals, manning that phone. If you call, uh, you're not bothering us. That's what we're here for. I would much rather deal with a question before it becomes a problem than deal with a problem because you didn't ask a question. There's no way for me to know that something is going on, going on with you unless you tell me, okay? Um, the second thing I want to let you know is that uh, we're here. Just if, you, if you're in your Shalayim and you need help with something, don't, or if you're anywhere in the country and you need help with something, reach out to us. We're happy to set an appointment for you to come in, to sit with you. If you're having trouble filling out the form for the driver's license, whatever it is, just call. We're happy to make an appointment to sit with you and do that. We have our office in Tel Aviv where we can do that as well. Um, if you're somewhere a little further afield, north or south, usually it's better off to do these things by phone. But again, we are here for you, uh, whatever you need. Okay. Um, yes, did I leave anything out? Anything you want to add? Um, no, I don't think you left anything out, but I just want to, if I can, I'll just answer two quick things that were asked in the chat. Um, the first was about OPAN. Somebody asked about OPAN choices. So th th that's a combination of, the, of an answer there. First of all, you need to try and look around in your neighborhood, um, ask other Olim, check what is going on in your neighborhood and try and gather information from there. In addition, at your appointment at Misrat Akrita, that is the opportunity to talk about, A, any information that you gathered on your own and brought to that meeting, or you can ask there for a list or any opanim that are starting in your area. Um, anybody who asks about that can send us an email to the answers email. We may have one or two other resources for um, opan post aliyah, okay? And the other thing I wanna answer is somebody asked about getting a passport before January 1st. So let's just be clear. Uh, I think Shlomo mentioned, I'm just going to reiterate. Right now, the, the rule that's in place is that you need to leave Israel before January 1st. So if you're leaving December 31st and coming back a year later, you may have an issue. You may need to have a travel document for that trip. But if you're leaving by January 1st and you're coming back January 12th, 15th, 8th, whatever it is, you're going for a couple of weeks of vacation, as long as you have that valid foreign passport in your Tudat Zahut, you should have no problems getting into the country at that time. Okay? I just want to add one thing to what you just said. Um, at your meeting with Ms. Klita, they should give you a list of Olpanim that are acceptable for the area. And again, I want to reiterate what you said. If you do not get that piece of paper, check that you have that piece of paper. And if you don't have that piece of paper, Ask them for it while you are there. It is important. Misrata Klita are the only ones who 
uh, determine which opanim are eligible for the benefit. And they're the only ones who can give you an accurate list of the opanim. So get that, make sure you get that at your meeting with Nishada Klita. Um, Rachel Spiro, I just wanted to, I saw your question. Please call us privately so that we can discuss um, the issue with you privately. There's gonna be a lot of questions that I need to ask before I can answer that question in any intelligent way. Okay. All right, I wanna thank everyone for joining us. I apologize for the hiccups at the beginning. Hopefully we evened out to everyone's satisfaction as we went along. Um, but again, if you, uh, if you need anything, call us. We are, we are available for you. Uh, I'm gonna stick around for another 10 minutes. If anyone has any questions, they can just unmute themselves and ask. Are there any questions that anyone would like to ask? I'm, I'm confused about a couple of things. Um, okay. The, so there's a family SIM code that we had uh, planned in New York. I was, I was skipping, I could go to it. It sounded at the airport very complicated to leave the country uh, before, the, before I get the Israeli passport. Did I, mis did, I, did I misunderstand that or, or not? I'm just confused. Here's the thing, right now, because the Mishrat Afanim is having a problem getting appointments, they are allowing any Israeli, period, to leave on a foreign, to leave and enter on a foreign passport until January 1st, 2023. There should be no problems leaving the country until that time. After that time, you are going to need an Israeli passport in order to leave or enter the country. If I, right? if I, go, to, if I go to New York for two weeks in November- No I, problem. Am I extending that three month period of time? I want to get the Israeli passport as soon as possible. Am I am I delaying that? No, not at all. Not at all. So there's no downside. If I need to go to the States for two weeks, I can do that. Yes, I will absolutely. do it with my two I, I, I need my two dozen foot, I guess, and my American passport. Yes, you need your two dots, your American passport, and in your American passport is your Aliyah visa. That Correct. shows that you made Aliyah and are now an Israeli citizen. There Correct. should be no problems until January 1st. January 1st, then there's you're going to need the Israeli passport after that, unless they choose to extend it further, which we have not heard any rumblings of yet. All right. So if I go in November and come back, um, I'm okay. And you're then, fine. As as you're fine. Week, and then and then the Misrat of Pneem, you said something about getting a passport early. I wasn't clear on that. That's like yeah, so when, when you go to get your biometric to Datsuhu, okay, it is the same clerk at the same desk at the same office who also does the biometric passport. So you can ask if you can apply for the passport as well at that meeting. Unfortunately, as I was saying, they don't like to do it if it's before three months because there are complications that arise. Um, it cuts off an option of something that you could potentially do. And they don't like cutting off people's options. So you can ask them when you go to apply for the, for the biometric data. They may tell you that you have to sign something called an Arli waiver, which means that you're waiving your right to renounce your Israeli, your Aliyah within the three months. Okay. But again, that's something that Misada Pnim does not like to do because there are certain countries where it causes problems for people. The U.S. should not be one of them, but Mishad Afanim doesn't believe us on. Now, so, are, we're all supposed to get our uh, Tuesday. You're getting your temporary Tudatsuhut. You still have to make an appointment with Mishad Afanim to apply for your biometric Tudatsuhut. What, what until, can't you do with the temporary one that you need the nothing, biometric? Nothing, it is I, until you get, until it either expires or you get and activate the biometric Tudatsuhut, the temporary Tudatsuhut is a full, valid Tudatsuhut. And it's good for a year. It's good for nine months. Okay. All right. Um, Max, I saw your hand go up. You want to ask a question? Hi, this is Melanie, his wife. Um, so I'm still confused about this passport thing. If we okay. have to leave the country from January 1st, we were not able to get an appointment until January 19th in Haifa to get our passports. And okay. so if for some reason we have to run back to the States for a family emergency and we don't have our Israeli passport and it's after January 1st, what happens then? 
you should you will make yourself an appointment with Mishara Pnim and ask them for something called an Ishur Yitziah B'Darkonzah, which is permission to leave on a foreign passport. Okay? okay. Now, again, you shouldn't, until January 1st, you don't need it. After January 1st, if you haven't gotten your, your Israeli passport by then, you're going to need it. If you are worried and you want to try to get an earlier appointment, please call star 3680 and ask us if we can help you get an earlier appointment. Okay. Otherwise, but, what but in, even though despite the earlier appointment, Shomo, um, Melanie and others will be limited to when they can get that appointment because they just exactly. can't. Exactly. Right, right. But, but here's the thing. You, you, made there, Aliyah, you made Aliyah before today, which means that the earliest or, or that the latest that your three months will be up is December 18th. Right. Which means which means that you can apply that even if you don't do the early, as long as you apply for the passport after December 18th, and again, some of you will have made Aliyah a few days ago, a week or two ago, whatever it is, three months from that date, you can apply for the passport. Right. I understand, but there's nothing available in the country. Most places, there's nothing until March. I felt lucky to get something in Haifa in January. That's why I'm saying the call us. Oftentimes, we're able to help people get earlier appointments. Oh, I see. Okay, very good. Okay. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> I'm unclear about one thing. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. We, can we go straight with our little piece of paper to the uh, Maccabi or wherever we're going? We don't have to go to the bank first or anything. For the, I would do things in the order that they're here. You're going to have to, at some point, you're going to have to give your kupat cholim an Israeli credit card, all right? So that's why bank account is one of the first things that's there. I would encourage you to open up your bank account as soon as possible, the first thing you do for a variety of purposes, but if for some reason it is taking you a long time to get the bank account open, then go to the kupat cholim first. Okay. Okay. I just right. wanted to say, I just wanted to say really quickly, uh, during this call, I went looking through uh, Tel Aviv locations and happened on Herzliya that had a Tuesday morning appointment that was open. So I think that's an example of what you're saying, how sometimes appointments open up in the near future. Exactly. It's really not possible to know from one day to the next when the appointments are going to open up, except to know that they do open up. Um, but again, if you already made yourself an appointment, you can't make yourself a new appointment without canceling the old appointment. So if you have an appointment for early or mid-January, like I would not cancel that in, unless you knew from us that there was another appointment to be gotten. Okay? Right. All right. Okay. Uh, Neve, I see your hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, hi. Um, sorry, this won't really be relevant for most other people, but do you guys have any contacts or anything with the Army? Yes. Okay. Th thank you for reminding me about that. Um, if you're, if you're, for any Army questions, we have a special number for the Army. It's okay. star 6563. Sorry, and, can you that that one, and that one is answered 24-7. Okay, what's the number again? Sorry. Star 6563. Okay, thank you. All right, no problem. Okay, Ilya, I see your hand is up. Yes, uh, the simple question. Yes. When and where this meeting will be posted to review information? We're going to email everyone a recording of this session. Okay. And second of all, just to clarify, if you leave the country with a foreign passport and before January 1st, there is no problem entering the country back, right? Right. They may ask you a couple of questions of passport control, but there's no reason to think they won't let you in. Okay. That was the question. Thank you very much. No problem. All right. Um, we've reached three o'clock, basically. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, again, you should be getting a recording of this session um, sometime within the next few days. Uh, and again, any questions, star 3680, please use the number. Uh, that's what it's there for. Have a great day, everybody, and Mazalto. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.